Would you tell them that? We are welcome to the Out Away Than Humans. Hello, and welcome to Episode 7 of the Art of Raising Humans podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Sarah. And we are coming to you today um, from with a beautiful fall, cloudy, rainy morning here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so for this podcast, I decided to throw on a hoodie because I like hoodies. We both love hoodies. I wish every day was a hoodie day. If I could wear a hoodie every day to work, I would, wouldn't <laughs> yeah, you? Definitely. We love it when our kids wear hoodies. It just <laughs> feels so relaxing. But we're we're podcasting to you from our master closet, so we really can't see the weather, but the hoodie helps me kind of feel it. And I thought it was just appropriate today because in this episode, I wanted to talk about a subject that's really important that all too often um, I think parents really forget, and it's self-care, taking care of yourself. I know in the private practice, when clients come and, and, and want to get help with kids, you know, typically I do naturally just jump into connection, which we talked about a few episodes ago. But, you know, Dr. Laura Markham, um, you know, one of the people who helped teach us this approach, um, she really emphasizes the first step is self-care. And so when I was writing out the episodes and Sarah and I were talking about different topics that we wanted to cover, I, I really almost felt bad that we waited so long to cover this because self-care is such a vital part of our parenting. I mean, really, Sarah, how do how does a parent get the space to do most of the stuff we're asking unless they're taking care of themselves? And isn't it easy to forget that aspect? Yeah. When when you talk about self-care, I feel like I see a lot of stuff of, oh, self-care. And you think of of the cup of coffee or the quiet moment reading a book. And I just think, yeah, when? When yeah. is that supposed to happen? And I think most parents feel like that. I, I, It's really, really tough with all the demands. Are We live in a society that says, do more, do it better, uh, always excel. And, and, and so all that takes a lot of time. And you're supposed to, if you can fit in one more thing for the PTA or fit in one more thing for, for this, there's always demands. There's so many demands and so many requests. And they're good things or they're legitimate or they really need to be done. And my child really needs this. And I mean, Halloween is right around the yes, corner. Yes. So I'm thinking, a few days away. well, we have to decorate our trunk for trunk or treat. And we've got to get the costumes. And Brendan had a problem with his costume. And so there, even silly things like that are always pretty present. If it's not that, it's something else. And they're coming in there and they create that stress and all of that makes it very hard to ever get back to self-care. Well, I know you and I were just talking just before we started recording about what we were kind of in a good rhythm, too, of getting some good self-care. I don't know if you, you know, it's nice to be in that rhythm where you're finally in a pattern where you finally have some time to breathe. And then we bought a puppy because we've been waiting for a long time to get a puppy. The kids have wanted a puppy. We had no idea how much time that was going to take. So all of a sudden that rhythm was broken. And I know some tears were shed by you and, and even by me about getting the puppy. Um, not tears of joy, but tears of like, what did we do? Why did we add another thing on the checklist? Just because the kids kept asking us and we held off for so long. And then a moment of weakness, I, I found this puppy and thought it was a perfect time. I thought it was kind of, a, we're hoping that eventually it will lead to more self-care, right? Because having the puppy. That was, the yeah. idea was, yes, this puppy, we had this goal, this dream, a family puppy, so great. And um, we're just in the throes of it being a stress instead yeah. of a benefit because well, she's an yeah. active. And just to be honest, the puppy today is at puppy daycare specifically <laughs> because we needed some self-care today. We, we also wanted to record this podcast and do other things too. But I found, you know, I think that was so surprising to me, Sarah, when we first had kids. You and I, especially when we first were married without kids, there's a lot of things we love to do. We love to go running. I love mm -hmm. to play soccer. Um, we even love to play video games. That was fun. You and I would sit down and play Halo for Free hours. Books, yes, travel. Re yes, all those things go were in coffee shops. Yes. And then all of a sudden we had kids and it seemed like a lot of that started to fall away. And what I've noticed, you know, a, a lot of times working with couples with kids is that lack of self-care. What that does, it kind of starts to trickle down to the whole family where then every moment is filled up with things to, to do. A bunch of have to's, a bunch of things we need to do. Um, there's very little even want to do. It's almost always have to, need to. And pretty soon that it starts to increase the tension, the stress among the parents and the kids 
kids, but among the couples, you know, and among, if you and I aren't getting self-care and then we're connecting less, there's more conflict with us. And, and then a lot of those couples ends up leading to, unfortunately, divorce or separation. And, and when they come to, to, to me or, or to you and they want to talk about how to help their kids through that process, um, you see there's no self-care. Like no one's really taking care of themselves. It, it's constantly just jumping from one event to the other and nobody has margin. Nobody has space to really be able to grow. It's just like crisis after crisis after crisis, you know, and it just wears on a person, you know? Yeah, I was thinking, yeah, it's just this to-do list that never ends, right? Every day we have a gigantic to-do list, usually a few things from the day before, and that just continues. And I think all the things we've already mentioned in the first few podcasts and the, and we have this idea in our head of, oh, this is the parent I want to be. For me, I see that. I, I have this idea. I have studied this for a long time and really invested a lot into parenting. But sometimes the things that get in the way are all my to-do lists. I can't do the things I want to do. I can't be the parent I want to be because I'm really stressed and it's so much harder to be in that space and be available to my children and do the relationship I want to do with them because I'm stressed so I don't have the available emotional energy to be there and there's so much on my to-do list that I can't show up and be with them the way I want to. When you're saying that, it reminds me of how Markham calls that being emotionally generous. I just, I know when I have a to-do list, I'm so snappy. I'm so impatient. I'm yelling at the kids more frequently. Um, everything they're doing looks like it's in opposition <laughs> to what mm -hmm. I want to do. It gets in the way. Yeah, it's, it's stopping me from achieving my goal. And um, I'm just not emotionally generous. You know, I have very little space. Um, and it's almost like going back to the brain stuff we talked about in episode two, it, it's really keeping you in the limbic system, you know, to where I'm constantly in the space of my agenda, my priorities, and it's just go, 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 go. And, and, and the kids feel it. So many kids come in and they realize their agenda and what they want to do. Typically, um, not only is it frustrating, but it's labeled as stuff like lazy. Um, you know, so, you know, the, the, the parents are, you know, if the kid isn't constantly trying to achieve something like they are, then how are they going to be successful? A lot of fear gets in there, you know? So there's this kind of need. We start, we start raising humans who are also are constantly being um, slaves to the urgent, right? I mean, they're always needing to do the next thing. They're always needing to look at the, if they have any free time at all, it's look at the checklist. What's mm -hmm. the next thing that needs to be accomplished rather than what can I do to take care of myself? How can I fill up my, my cup, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I don't think in, we uh, often put ourselves in this position or accept the position of doing is better than self-care and being. Yeah. It's what I, at the end of the day, I need to be able to demonstrate I've done a lot. I've accomplished a lot. I've checked these things off. I have these awards, these certificates, these, that's what we've placed more value yeah. on than just the sitting and the quiet. Mm -hmm. If you're doing nothing, it's what are you doing? Exactly. I'm not doing anything. I, I used to ask Why you are that. you not doing anything? <laughs> <laughs> that you, you're sounding like me. That's what I would say to you sometimes. And your comment to me was, as you were sitting there, sometimes just quietly sitting in the living room, I would say, what are you doing? And you would say, I'm being that I'm a human being, Kyle. You know, if you want to be a human doing, be a human doing, but I want to be a human being. And although that that's, that's, you know, in a simple statement, it really did hit me. I would think I am kind of a human doing. I'm always trying to find something to do. Now, I think certain personalities are more kind of driven that direction and other ones are more driven toward. And so I love how you and I balance each other that way. I think in most marriages, you'll find there is that kind of balance, but, but it can get out of whack. Cause like you said, our culture doesn't value the being. Our culture is always valuing the moving forward and doing. So it can look like that's the greater thing to achieve, you know? Mm -hmm. And especially when you got so many things to do, right? With kids, there's an endless amount of things to do. And it's not like the the doing, the things that you're doing, it's not like they're bad. They're great things. We, you know, go play soccer, go, um, I don't know, repaint that bedroom mm -hmm, or something. Mm -hmm, it's not, mm -hmm. it's just, they sometimes get so many, they then squeeze out any self-care, any yeah. human being. And I think a lot of times it's a state of mind. And maybe we'll get into this later in this podcast. But I think sometimes you can be doing things mm -hmm. and can actually be doing self-care by the doing. You know, mm -hmm. It's all about, instead of it being a checklist, it's something that I want to do, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would say that's one thing that helped me understand self-care better was getting rid of the have-tos and getting rid of the need-tos. I tell clients a lot, I just try to get those out of my vocabulary. You know, Even mowing the lawn could be self-care. 
It doesn't have to be a have to. Some people love it. Some people find a lot of peace in mowing the lawn. I know what I try to do is I love podcasts. So I, uh, that's why I'm doing a podcast, but I love podcasts. And I would listen to podcasts about soccer because I love soccer or listen to podcasts about movies. because I love movies. And that's what I would listen to while I mowed the lawn. And then the lawn wasn't as stressful, you know, even though it, but if I'm just there doing like, I got to get this done, got it. The same activity could be very draining, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted to ask you this, Sarah, well, what is self-care and why is it crucial to being the parent you want to be? You know, it's, it's not about escaping the moment, but, but why is it crucial to you? You know, what, what, what has it meant to you and your journey as a parent? Well, self-care, um, I think it looks different for everybody. I think one person's self-care is cleaning. One person's self-care is painting something. So Mm. I think you do have to step back for a moment and think, what is my self-care? You need to sit down, take some time, write out the things that are self-care for you. Reading a book, calling a friend up, going out for a a night out. Self-care can look very different. Staying in could be Mm self-care for mm -hmm. somebody. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to really be sure what your self-care is. What's going to fill your bucket up? Because we're looking at what, how am I going to take care of myself to fill my bucket up so then I'm available, which you talked about a minute ago, but being available in the way I want to be for, in my case, for you in our relationship, for our children in our relationship. And then it goes out to friends, family, everyone else. But I have to first take care of myself, fill myself up, do the things that nurture me, and then I can be there for the others. In in my case, I'm not, you jump, you jump out of bed yeah. and you're ready to go at 5.30 yeah. or whatever yeah. time. You are a bundle of energy, but I'm not wired that way. Mm-hmm. A slower morning takes care, more nurtures me, takes care of me, yeah. and then I can go, go, go for a long time. So I like my morning where we've kind of worked it out, where yeah. you are up rhythm. and out. Yeah. yeah, it took a while, but <sighs> you were up and out. But, and, but I take that moment and, and that's when I like to... For me, that's when I meditate. That's when I, I put on something and I, you know, prayer, whatever, whatever it might be for someone else. But I, I sit there and I just take that quiet moment of peace and that fills me up. I kind of let go of everything, all this, because I go into the morning thinking, oh, I have so much to do. And I can just set all that side of that, all that aside, just have my moment. Yeah. And then I can enter into that stuff in a better space and ready to take it on and ready to go through it. And it actually goes better with a nicer flow yeah. when I have first had that moment. The mornings I don't get that moment, I feel it and I yeah. miss it. Yeah. How does somebody discover that, though? Like, I think that's what's hard. I, I bet a lot of people would love to do self-care, but they don't know what would nurture them. You know, mm-hmm. you use that term. So how does a person figure that out? You try things. I think okay. you you have to be intentional about setting that time. I didn't know I liked that. Yeah. Until just that moment of not feeling good in the morning. Didn't like what? Dreading the moments. Didn't like what? The... I mean, you, you didn't know you liked that. What was I didn't it? know that. I didn't know I liked my quiet Yeah, mornings. so almost like you didn't, didn't know. know that's, liked, that's why I was yeah, thinking that. Yeah. You didn't the know you needed back, that. And yes. somehow you found out you needed that. <clears throat> yeah, so I think we have these moments and we just have to pay attention to ourselves. Yeah. You have to wake up to what you're feeling inside. Don't just be, don't just run and go and go and go and go and go. You have to take the moment to stop and pause, sit and reflect. Yeah. Where am I? How am I doing in life? What do I enjoy doing? Try some things out. If you don't, if you really don't know, try some things out. Start making a list of what you think would work. Try a couple of those things and rate them. This one was really great. Really made me feel good. This one was okay. Maybe some days I'll do that. But you just have to be intentional about it. You don't fall into it. You have to sit and think about it. Give it a try. Give it a try for a while and see how it's doing and just come back to it. Come back to it. Prioritize it as if it's more important than everything else on your list. What is it you're looking for? How do you know when you try something, if that's the thing I think will work for me? That's the thing that's really nourishing me. How do you know? I think when you feel like you are available to those things, the things that you need to do and the people in your relationship, you know, when you're, when you're usually the signs of stress, you're tense, you're physically tense. You're more likely to snap at people. Mm -hmm. 
even though you're trying to get things done, you may be flying through them or you may have a hard time getting through them. And that's usually signs of stress. Physical health is a sign of stress. There's signs of stress and that's usually telling you that your balance of, we're gonna have stress, yeah. exercise is stress. So yeah. we have these stressors in our life and we wanna balance that by having the self-care. Mm -hmm. And then our body does okay because you enter a stressor, exercise or a long to-do list, whatever it might be, then you enter in the self-care and those two things should come to a meeting point where your body is stressed but recovers. And the stress should not be greater than the recovery. And if you have too much recovery and you're just sitting around all day, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you, you can drop down below that. You want yeah. that balance of mm -hmm. stress recovery. I'm thinking what I noticed too, for me, uh, you both, you know, we've been married for almost 20 years. And so in that journey, we've been trying to figure this out together. I, I feel like we've stumbled upon this the past four or five years, a good rhythm. You know, for you, uh, with the thing you're doing in the morning, I, I would fall asleep. <laughs> it would be really, really, and not to, uh, meditate, I think is always helpful. It's just really, really difficult for me. And I could probably use more of it, but I find CrossFit is almost a meditation for me, you know, like the ability to get my brain into an activity and really push myself. And how do I know it's effective? I know it because I'm less angry. I'm less pissed off at people. I'm less frustrated at the kids. I'm more patient. I feel joy is more accessible. Peace is more ready at my hand, you know? Um, also reading. Reading is something I just love. I mean, so I hunger for it. You know, just recently I, I told you, I noticed because of the puppy, because of the kids, we kind of got into a, a rhythm that a lot of parents get into, which once the kids are asleep, we watch a show. And we love watching shows. You and I love stories. We love seeing people's lives. There's a lot of great shows out there. But I noticed I was mad because I wasn't able to read. So I was actually mad at the puppy. I was mad at the kids because they were like, make, take it all my time away from reading when really they weren't. I had this time at night. And so I told you, I said, hey, could we just shift to reading at night? And I just want to do that because I also want to see if I'm sleeping better because I'm reading all those kind of things. Right. So so going back to the word nurturing, I, I loved how you use that, that that's what the self-care is. And it's important for you and I to do it because then we model it to the kids. You know, we want our kids to know this stuff too. I want them to figure this stuff out now. I think part of the art of raising humans is, is, is leaving, um, um, sh modeling to them how we nurture ourselves and then teaching them how to nurture themselves, you know? And, and I, I think there were times as a kid that lots of times I would figure out I like this or this, but there was very little opportunity to say that. Like, I want to pursue this because it nurtures me. I didn't have that language. I had no idea, you know? Mm -hmm. It's basically yeah. you just went from activity, activity, activity. You did what your parents took you to or whatever, right? But I'd really love for our kids to know, you know, just like I think for us, how to get like self-care for us, going back to the brain, helps me move my limbic system to my prefrontal cortex. And so when I'm in my prefrontal cortex, I can, I'm better able to be creative and solve problems. I'm not overwhelmed by, by anxiety and fear. And I want the kids to see us know how to access that, you know, even in busy times, you know, there's going to be seasons that are busier, but even then self-care they see is still a priority, not, not self-care of like, I need to get away from you. I think sometimes parents see self-care as, oh, God, I just need to get away from them. You know, like with the puppy, I kind of feel that a little bit. Like I just need to get away from the puppy for right now. But, but to actually, get, I'm not getting away from anything. I'm embracing something else. I'm moving towards nurturing and life and joy instead of moving away from stress and conflict. And, and you know, does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. I, I love how you were saying that. And and I, I like the idea of modeling it for our kids and giving voice to it, saying it, letting them know what we're doing, because they're going to learn the most not they're going to learn the most by watching us. So if we're saying, if we're using the language of, I need some self-care. I've noticed I'm really stressed. I'm kind of mm -hmm. snappy. Mm -hmm. I'm irritable. You guys notice that? Just talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And then and your kids go whoa okay you see that you know yeah. I, I know our kids can say we talk about grumpy days yes yeah, you know yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm feeling pretty grumpy yeah, today yeah, yeah. and so we just say we need some self-care so we model to them how am i going to do that how am i going to prioritize take care of myself so i can come back to these relationships come back to this stuff to do and and so i think when we say it we talk about it within ourselves and then our children learn how to say that they're feeling, they're yeah. having a hard day. Yeah. They're feeling very stressed because we have a society 
kids are stressed nowadays yes. yeah. and teenagers yeah. are really stressed yeah. and it comes out and people might label it rebellion. People yeah. might la- have Defiance. all these. Yeah. yeah. People have words for it. But a lot of times when you, when you come back to the kid, they're really stressed. Yeah. They have a whole lot on their plate, yeah. just like we do, because our society is modeling that. <clears throat> yeah. And so to get them the language of and the awareness to realize I'm feeling stress yeah. and to, to know that and then to know what am I going to do about it? How can I take care of myself? So we can start with our kids when they're little. I If I notice our kids a couple days ago. They were just at each other yeah, more than more, usual. More sibling conflict. Yeah. yeah, shorter with each other. Yeah, yeah, a and, snappy. And so I check in and I say, "Hey, I kind of in a good moment, yeah. not in the midst of it, but later in a quiet, sweet moment, I just sit down with them. Hey, how how are you feeling? What was going on today? Yeah. This seemed like you were a little more. And if they feel safe, then they can say." Yeah, I, I am. And so we can talk about it. How can we help you? How can we problem solve this, take care of you so that you can come back to your siblings and your friends and have the relationship they want to have? Well, and I know Abby would tell you it's art, right? If Abby's like that, she wants to go draw. You yeah. Know? So if Abby's sitting down drawing, she's trying to do self-care. Brennan's is Legos. Or do you remember when Brennan was, he wanted to just play with cars. Mm-hmm. So he just, you, you'd see Brennan just go off and he'd be just playing with cars, right? So it wasn't a rejection of his sisters. I don't want to play with you. It was like, I need some time. He fills me. up by that alone yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. And then even Abby, it's not like, I don't want to be with you guys. I just want to embrace this other thing. Mm-hmm. So I think some simple steps, I want to throw out one if you have anything to add. I think some simple steps I would tell clients to do, specifically, I'm seeing a lot of college kids like this who are so anxious about their futures. And so they constantly need to be doing work or, or you know, getting an internship or whatever the list may be, right? Or teenagers who constantly are thinking about the future is what I like them to do is just like you said, notice throughout the day things that fill them up, things that light them up, things that energize them, things that they go, oh, more of that, please. <laughs> you know, almost like you would with food. You know, how you like that? Oh, that tastes good. It's like, I want you to notice that. And daily when you feel that spark, Write it down. Like mm-hmm. put it in a journal. I was Today, say, put it in your phone. Oh, that's great. Everyone yeah. has lists yeah. on their phone. And yeah. then when you're in that moment, you can also go back and go, what, what was my list again? And yeah. pull it up and pick one. Another one would be like on that line, you brought up the phone. I was thinking lots of our culture is that. Like the, the kids will say self care is I just want to be alone with my phone. Right. And it's yeah. really typically not say and it never can be self-care. It can be. But typically it's escapism. Right. Mm-hmm. So typically in our culture, self-care looks like entertainment. And once again, not to say that can't be. Mm-hmm. I mean, you and I love movies. And I go to my, it does energize me to certain stories. But to constantly have that be the only way of doing that or kids after school will. It seemingly looks like self-care because after school, they don't want to talk. They just want to be on their phone. Right. Mm-hmm. It's almost that is almost I say 70, 80 percent of the time escaping the moment. Right. So I would encourage, especially like you know, what, what I'll try to do if I'm on the phone too much is it typically is me just trying to get through that time. I just want to, this empty space instead of me taking a moment, what, what do I want to do right now? You know, yeah. what could I do? And to, what I find when I do that reading comes to my mind, um, you know, some kind of other type of activity, Legos could come. I remember during the, the pandemic when it was, we were all kind of shut down. We, when we started doing a lot of Legos together and I was finding doing date night with you, just sitting at the table doing Legos mm-hmm. was really fun. I liked the little projects and getting them done. So it'd be important for them to, to, for people to take like a note of just what brings that spark so then they can start watering that and nurturing that in themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, going back to what you said about the phone, I think everyone knows this. We we live in a society where you can just start scrolling and scrolling mm-hmm. and you're going through Instagram or Facebook or, you know, all the sites. And um, I think you, you have to do that check-in with yourself to go, am I feeding myself right now or am I avoiding mm, something? Yeah. Am I escaping from this stress instead of am I, just what you said earlier? Am I moving towards something yeah. intentional yeah. or am I just trying to block out this other thing? Yeah. Yeah. And we, it is easy to do. I know I've done it where I just think, ah, it's yeah. too much. Sure. I'm going to go check my mess, you know, yeah, yeah, and yeah. just yeah. kind of check out. Yeah. And maybe we do that sometimes. It's not the worst thing, but just be aware of it. Yeah. And you, and it's, it's not going to feed you and take care of you in the way that intentionally engaging in self-care will. Yeah. 
It's great. Well, I hope I hope everybody listening and, and, and is going to take some notes from that and really go pursue self-care. Sarah and I, it continues to be a constant pursuit for us. You can go to our website. We'd love to have your comments. You know, I really wanted to take a moment in this to say, get, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear if you're enjoying the podcast. I'd love for you to rate us, to, you know, to give us a start. All that kind of stuff helps us get up there more. But also if you have questions, things you'd like us to cover. So right now, you know, we have so many topics we want to cover, Sarah and I do, but we also want to cover one specifically that are pertinent to what you're going through. So feel free to, to, to send us um, you know, a message through any of those places, through Facebook, through Instagram, um, even through the website. And uh, we would love then to use some of those topics for future episodes. So um, I hope you enjoy your fall day, um, whatever it's like, if it's sunny or rainy, maybe throw in a hoodie, but take care of yourself today. So thanks for listening. The Art of Raising Humans podcast should not be considered or used as counseling, but for educational purposes only.